What's going on everybody? I just wanted to do a video on drilling holes in stainless steel because it's definitely a beast in itself. There's a whole different process involved and there's a couple of things you need to remember. Low speed. Use a cordless drill and set it on the slowest setting. There's two reasons for that. If you look down here at my oil puddle, you'll notice that the drilling action does not wash away the oil puddle which you must have by the way you need oil when you're drilling stainless in my okay, you can see now i'm not really swamped in oil like i was it's all been brushed to the side in a putty turn it back to one i'm gonna oil back up i'm gonna go slow Using a lot of pressure is okay. It's not something that will kill it, as long as you're low RPM. I put as much pressure as I can without breaking the drill bit. That sucker's buckling when I'm drilling into it. So that's another tip. Don't be afraid to put too much pressure thinking about the overheat theory. You can pretty much darn near break the drill bit. Just keep the RPMs down. Yeah, don't be afraid to use a lot of pressure though. There is the overheat theory, but that's an RPM thing. You can use a lot of pressure and that does produce heat as well, but not as much as the high RPMs. The friction is just way higher. And for some reason, I think the fact that the oil is left in the location, the work is taking place at low RPMs. That's why the higher pressures aren't attributed to some of the meltdowns you'll see with the higher speeds. but. You definitely want to give it all the pressure you can without breaking the drill bit and stainless steel because you need all that pressure to actually cut the metal. This stuff ain't no joke. Well, I'm about nine hours in. And one of the reasons why I recommend using a cordless drill versus a power drill is because of the RPM issue. If you try to run a power drill at low RPMs, it wasn't designed for that. So the cooling fan is not going to be at an operating speed capable of removing the heat generated for the, the job. This on the other hand is, that cooling fan is screaming at this speed. However, on a power drill, that does not take place. You are running the thing way beyond what it can handle at those low RPMs and you will burn up your drill doing a job like this. This is probably about six hours total worth of drilling it's i got nine hours quoted but uh some of that was other stuff like laying this out and cutting this out of the steel plate and all that jazz but okay guys in this section i'm going to show you a method of drilling stainless steel that has some very important rules you must abide by you have to know how to sharpen drill bits to do this also it's the high speed mode you can go with the top speed of a drill as long as you keep the hole flooded so the second we start to see smoke we stop drilling and we cool the bit off because the smoke point of this oil is right around 300 some degrees so we're going to keep that in mind i'm going full speed i see smoke i'm gonna hit a little bit of oil there now i'm going to start the ascent of my angle these are all angular holes okay getting a little dry there Oops, I forgot to tighten up. But you see how it is possible to do this. I don't recommend it for a novice. If you're a professional and you're in a big ass hurry and you know how to sharpen drill bits, this is a good route to go to. Here we go, I'm gonna plunge at my angle. Stop it about there. Got some really good smoke going there. Pull that base metal off with a little splash. I don't like using a brush because that's a huge waste of oil. I'll go through five cups drilling all these holes, doing that. As soon as we start getting good smoke, I kind of back off. Oh, we're already through. See how fast we got through that hole? And this is some uh, 304 stainless, so definitely not a joke. 
Okay, I'm gonna cool that tip off. Make sure we're nice and hard for this odd cut. There we go. We had like an egg tooth thing going on there. Sometimes I'll see a little puff of smoke, but I'll keep going because I can see that the hole is still flooded enough that we're just making smoke. We're not burning out. There's a difference between seeing smoke and having your puddle completely burn out. So if I still see a good slush, I'll give it another second or two before I remove the bit from the cut. This stuff gets really important when you're drilling this many holes. I'm about nine hours into this burner plate, by the way. So at $50 an hour, somebody needs to buy an EDM machine. One thing I like to do every once in a while is brush away the flakes. That way you can tell if you're still making progress. So you're not just sitting there spinning your wheels. You might need to change bits out. You wouldn't know it if you didn't brush that pile away. So you just kind of brush it away and another hit. These holes have to be drilled at an angle for this project. You can see there I am making chips still. So, so the reason why I'm giving you tips that may save you from wasting two minutes is because when you're drilling holes that take five minutes and you got 500 of them, that's a couple of hundred dollars worth of labor there. So, damn, this thing's gonna be expensive. The guy who's actually getting this is lucky enough he will not be charged this much my normally hour rate. Because this thing alone, man, this is going to take forever. Drilling all these holes. That's it. how many holes you get out of uh, one cobalt bit. This last hole here didn't get quite finished. It started walking all over on me, doing all kinds of weird stuff. just doesn't feel good anymore so I'm swapping out but just for perspective I'm really giving this thing hell of course but uh, I gotta get this done sometime today I'm 50 minutes in and that doesn't count this center section right here if it wasn't for this thing I wouldn't be able to be standing out here right now it's like a heat index of 110 or something crazy as you can see, I've made several high-performance modifications. But, uh, yeah. Wherever I stand, this thing goes right next to me. Cold air out the front, hot out the back, I'm down. I don't like that configuration. Thought I'd show you that. If you haven't done this yet in your shop, what are you waiting on? This thing saves your life. Damn it, man. You're looking at about 11 hours of work right there, guys. Call me what you want. <laughs> it took that many of the small drill bits. Them are ruined. They need sharpened. But sharpening a, a drill bit this small is quite the challenge. Um, these bigger holes I was able to do at a higher speed because I could sharpen the bit. And... Uh, those holes cut twice as fast as these small holes. But uh, that is a deadly pile of uh, extreme metal splinter right there. Stainless steel filings ain't no joke. I probably ought to clean this whole area up before I do anything else. But uh, there it is, man. We're going to see this thing in a test action here in a little bit. Definitely like how well the Sharpie did on this. All right, so 16 and a half hours later, that's when I started on this thing. But there it is, looking good. We're gonna do a test before we add the preheat coil system on the bottom of this thing. But for the most part, there it is. We're now running a stainless steel plate. This is 3 304 stainless, I believe. The 310 was just cost prohibitive and I don't think we need it. But that's where we're at. That's on low. You can't see the flames unless you're at an angle. You can see them. Fire 
fireball is actually just in the high pressure region right there. how that plate buckles on us it looks like it's buckling got a couple drill holes to drill out I think I'm gonna drill out them center spire holes a little bigger I don't like how we don't have a big fire in the middle anymore this is different 